without further ado, it is my honor to introduce our leader and director of athletics here at the University of New Orleans and our special guest in today's Zoom, Mr. Tim Duncan. Matt, how are you doing, man? How are you? You doing all right? All right. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I was going to say, before I let you go in, we might have to get a little friendly wager going. Um, our, or my Bills and his Steelers will be playing another late season prime time game. And uh, we won't mention what happened uh, last year for you guys. Well, it was a tune up. And as you know, so uh, obviously we're having a uh, future Hall of Fame quarterback coming back. So we expect uh, a lot different results. This year. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all yours then. The floor is yours. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for having me, uh, Matt and Keyshawn. I appreciate you guys inviting me to participate in this Zoom in. I'm really excited about um, the process, but more excited about women's basketball. Uh, I know Coach will talk all about it, but let me steal a little bit of our thunder and talk about the wonderful season that women's basketball had by having the most wins in uh, Southland Conference in, since we've been in the Southland Conference in history, which was awesome with 13 wins. 17 on the season. We had a lot of momentum uh, going into the year. We had six great leaders that, that were seniors and a group of underclassmen who really balled out. So we were really excited about what that team did. I think they connected on a, uh, on a level that allowed them to succeed. Um, and it was a honor and a privilege to be able to watch them from the front row, uh, you know, as many games as I could. I got a chance to watch the historic win over Ole Miss when we beat the SEC team for over 20, the first time in over 20 years. Uh, that felt good being a, a native Memphian and going back close to home and beating up on a program that I've never had a lot of uh, liking for. So that was pretty good. Um, but then the, I think the most dramatic and traumatic uh, point of the season was uh, at the Southland Conference Tournament when um, I first got a call by no Dr. Nick Lowe that uh, he told me that they were going to cancel the conference tournament. Um, they were canceling them around the, com around the country. He called me um, prior to anyone else in the building and told me that the AD, all the presidents were online and they were going to vote to uh, shut down the conference tournament. Um, they just were waiting on the uh, requisite number of, of uh, presidents to have a quorum. So uh, nothing's official on a vote until you have a quorum. So he told me probably 30 minutes before everyone else, I gathered our senior staff together and told them and pulled Keyshawn and let her know. And um, he, he, the thing that he thought about first was making sure that we were there for our student athletes. He said, Tim, I need you to be there with the team because they're gonna be devastated. And, um, and, he, and what's unique about him, and I say this all the time, is that he was a former student athlete. He played football in college at Bucknell. His wife played ba volleyball in college. So they understand what it's like to compete and how finite amount of time the student athletes have. So his first thought were, were to those students. And that was, um, you know, I, I'm not sure. I know the other ADs didn't receive a call from their presidents prior to this happening. So I feel fortunate and privileged that he looked out and um, thought enough um, about me to give me a call and, and make preparations for our student athletes. So that was a definitely a dramatic and traumatic time. Our student athletes were devastated. We felt good about our prospects of getting our a win in the conference tournament, uh, about advancing. We had already beat the number one seed um, before, so we felt really good about our chances. Um, and it was devastating for those things to not be able to finish the deal. So um, life throws us that sometimes, and we just got to control what we can control. And this uh, year will still be a special one, regardless of what if we were able to finish on our own terms or not. So. Um, at, some, at the right point in time, we'll bring that group of uh, young ladies back and highlight them in a way that deserves and shows their recognition. We'll, do, we'll work together to figure out an appropriate time. But um, that was a, uh, not something that you learn in AD school uh, on how to have those conversations. So uh, again, it was, um, it was a thrill. I, I hope that doesn't put you know, too much of a damper on the season. To me, it just shows the passion and level of passion that our student athletes and coaches have for, um, for privateer basketball. So. I'm excited about um, next year. I've got a chance to uh, be a, a part, a small part of the recruiting process, and I'm excited about the young ladies that they have coming. And I'll let them talk about that. But um, I'm excited about our women's basketball program. I'm excited about our future, and uh, I can't wait to hear what uh, Coach Davenport has to say about uh, you know all of this and next season. They set the privateers this last season the third best record of NCAA Division I programs here in our state, 
in Louisiana and first right here in New Orleans, best NCAA Division I record of any program here in our own city, which is huge. And the most wins since the 92 to 93 season. And I don't mean to just touch on accomplishments on the court. Her student athletes killed it off the court, not only in the classroom, they were a huge part of what the program and our department of a whole is trying to bring to the New Orleans community. Our program, if you didn't know, was number one overall in the Helper Helper Challenge across all sports. And this women's program finished third in all of NCAA Division I basketball in community service hours. So coach, I know that was a little bit much, but we'd like to welcome you to the program and kind of let you take it away. You have the floor for the first couple minutes. Oh, you're too kind, Matthew. Thank you so much uh, for being such a gracious host. Good afternoon to everybody. It is so good and pleasant to see so much, uh, so many beautiful faces uh, on this call this afternoon. Um, I am very grateful that you have joined us. You did not have to spend your lunchtime uh, with us, but because you did, I am so grateful. I uh, pray that you and your families are doing well uh, during this unprecedented time, that you're staying safe and that we're all uh, practicing safe habits. I hope we're making sure people uh, stay six feet away. I announce it, y'all. When I go out in the public, six feet, give me six feet. You know, I get a little nervous when they get a little bit too close to me, uh, but also practicing uh, social distancing. And I just want to start off by thanking uh, Steve, Matt, uh, Kelvin for putting this call on today. And I am especially grateful for our administrative team uh, who has joined us today. Uh, my AD, Tim Duncan, you are the original. You are the best, sir. Uh, I, I, I salute you for what you have done uh, in one year. You're just making your one year anniversary right. here on campus. Mm -hmm. And my God, your, uh, your impact, that's that word, your impact, no doubt, uh, has been felt. But everybody knows, everybody knows this. There's no good man without some good women and good men that's standing right by their side. They know that. They're talking about the women be behind, but we're not behind. We're right on their side. They know that. No doubt that. about it. No <laughs> doubt about it. They know that. So we have some awesome administration that's on this call as well. Uh, to you, Kirsten, my SWA, my sports administrator, I want to thank you for all of your help and support on uh, this season. Dina, thank you for being on this call. Um, I'm still praying for your family and everything that you have recently experienced with the loss of your loved ones. We're no doubt um, still praying for you. Renee, Renee, I see you, honey bun. Thank you so much for your support and everything that you have done to make our program uh, even better. And right before um, I get into um, talking about the program. I don't care what anybody say. Let me look in y'all eyes and tell you all this. I have the best staff that a coach can have. Mm -hmm. I have the best staff that a coach can have. I'm telling you, every car has an engine, tires, and a steering wheel, and each one of my staff members are especially um, important to me. I'm grateful for you, Alpha English. I'm grateful for you, Y. Keith the Herald, uh, Coach Chris, my cool, calm, and collective coach. I love you. And Kendo, Kendo, who keeps me in, in, in line with everything and help this program run so smoothly. Uh, I am grateful for you all. I try to tell them every opportunity I get uh, behind closed doors and in front of others that they work extremely hard and I appreciate the work that they put into making this program uh, successful as it has been and will be. Coach Fav is on the call. I cannot go on talking if I do not recognize my coach is on the call and his wife, Doc. I am so blessed to have you joining in with us on today, as well as my teammates, family and friends. Hey, mom, I see you. I see my, <laughs> my brother is on as well. Uh, it's great to see everybody's faces. So enough about all of that. Um, it's just a blessing to be the head coach of this program. Um, as we know, not many people have the opportunity to coach at the university where they play 
and I have been blessed um, and fortunate to do so. And I don't take that lightly. I think uh, if you cut me, I, I might bleed. Mm -hmm. um, it may not come out red. It just, this may come out, uh, that's how much I love my privateers. And I am just so grateful uh, to still be here to see where the pro program has for me. Um, um, and how amazingly persistent and how we have through tough times before and where this program is going to go after we come out of this bad, uh, pandemic. If Katrina didn't stop us, y'all, Corona right. won't stop us either. I'm going to tell you that. If Katrina didn't knock us down and take us out, COVID-19 doesn't stand a chance. Uh, we're coming out of this thing, um, and we're coming out of this thing like we went into it. We went into this season extremely well. This thing uh, with smiles on our faces, uh, practicing all precaution, but nevertheless, uh, we're going to move forward. So, Matt, I'm going to pause. I don't know. Maybe you have some questions for me again. I'm just grateful that all of you all have joined us on today. Yeah, so and we won't harp on it too much longer, obviously, but we do want to mention it. What happened at the Southland Tournament. Um, you kind of had to go through it from an interesting perspective in terms of being the coach, but also having to get these ladies through it as well as they saw one of their one of the best seasons in recent memory end in such a tragic way. Kind of what was going through your mind as you found out and then how did, and we saw in the video as well, there's also the photo gallery and stuff that fans haven't seen. How did you then bring that team together um, after you heard the news of what was going to happen with the cancellation of the tournament? Yeah, that, that video always gets me. Um, I was good. <laughs> I think personally I was good with the decision that had been made um, at the conference tournament. I understood it, of course, as Tim uh, stated about Dr. Nick Lau and himself. Uh, the first concern was for our student athletes. As the discussions were going on, and we had already uh, conducted the national anthem and the started lined up, and um, you know I can see that the players were getting antsy, uh, wondering what was going on. Um, I think our camera people and other people really caught um, a sincere, genuine moment of me having a discussion first. Uh, with our starters. Um, I, I didn't even know that I was being recorded. It wouldn't have mattered because I was speaking to uh, them from my heart. And I was just um, uh, letting them know that it didn't matter what happened at that point. Um, they have always been told um, that we control the controllables. And at that point, it was out of our control uh, what was going to happen next. But what I did want them to be encouraged and know um, straight from me uh, that there was nothing that can take away from what they had already accomplished. And this team had already accomplished so much this year and how extremely grateful I was to be their coach and, um, you know, just godly proud of them that they had worked so hard. They didn't wish for anything this season. They worked extremely hard to get to the place where they were. My job as a coach uh, was at that moment, make sure that they um, keep their heads up. Um, you know, when, when the announcement came across, it, it was crushing um, to see the seniors uh, on the floor having to encourage them and pick them up um, to get them to the locker room. And because I am who I am, um, in that moment, it wasn't just about our seniors. Um, you know, Southeastern seniors uh, were feeling it. Sam Houston seniors who were waiting in the stands to watch us play, their seniors uh, were hurting. All of those student athletes whose careers had come to a very abrupt and sudden end uh, was feeling the pain of that moment. And as a coach um, in this uh, profession, not just for our seniors, but for all of those seniors, it, it was a very hard thing to digest and to see. But once we got into the locker room and really, you know, thank them, them being the seniors and our team, uh, we begin, um, you know, to slowly, slowly move forward. And again, personally, I was good. I'm a pretty strong person. Uh, so I held up pretty well at the gym. Uh, but I have to be honest, uh, when we were departing from the hotel 
and um, Kelvin sent me that video that you all just seen. Um, that's when reality set in for me. Uh, once I heard that Fast and Furious song, when will I see you again? I just started bawling. Oh, I'm like, oh my God, is this really the way this season ended? You know, the tears just start uh, coming down my eyes. I, I, I felt like, you know, Paul was leaving the Fast and Furious group. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was for a few minutes, I think I felt it from um, Katie to maybe Beaumont, y'all. Um, it took me a little bit to really get myself back together and realize that uh, that had just happened. Yeah, I would just like to throw on there too for the fans, not only you, but your staff handled that with incredible class. So shout out to you in there. But we're not the negative. We don't need to focus on that anymore. Let's go back to the positive. Because coach, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It was one of the best seasons in program history. Nothing can take that away from y'all. I won't go through the whole list again. Um, and then Mr. Duncan already mentioned, too, the upset over Ole Miss, most conference wins, most wins since 92-93. Coach, when you look back at this season, not only what does it mean to you, but what are you going to remember most about this special group of student-athletes? You know, um, just all that we went through as a team, I think Dr. Nicolau said it best when he addressed um, the faculty, staff, and everyone in his last um, message. What we've been through this year, and even as we uh, ended the season going through the pan pandemic, um, this group will no doubt have a unique, unbreakable bond. Um, they made memories and they did things that, um, you know, teams haven't done in our program in a long time and haven't done at all. So um, this team uh, just was exciting to watch from the beginning. And I know uh, Mr. Duncan came in on some of our practices last summer and I can remember him sitting in one practice in my freshman Mia Deck and uh, Vakila Pimpton. Between the two of them, they hit like seven threes within maybe like one or two minutes. And I was like, my God, this is gonna be a fun year. <laughs> when you have a freshman, knocking down threes, and when you had a uh, senior point guard knocking down threes like that, no doubt uh, from early on, from the summer, I realized that this was a special, uh, unique group. And you said it earlier, uh, we accomplish a lot uh, on the court, but, you know, I'm always striving to make an impact in the community and in the classroom as well. And Trey of Bruce, woo, 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 Trey of Bruce, um, took home an individual award for the student athlete who had the most community service hours. I was excited about that. At the same time, I reminded Blake that we're coming get our cup. I think that cup is in the wrong office, Kirsten. Y'all know how competitive I am about that. I don't want him to get comfortable with that community service award at all because we will be back to uh, – get what belongs to women's basketball. So uh, we definitely made our impact felt in the community. And um, as they're finishing our final exams right now, I'll be excited to see what we have done um, in the classroom. Of course, um, Ole Miss was a very exciting win for us this season. Oh my goodness, what a game uh, that was. I just got the pause, man, because again, I have the best staff ever. Many people do not know I was feeling so bad. I was so sick that game that at halftime, uh, my police escort was trying to get me to go to the ENT. EMT, they wanted the ambulance to take me away because my blood pressure was so high and I was feeling bad. And I'm like, I'm not about to miss this. I don't care if I pass out on the bench. I'm not about to miss this. So I'm quietly telling my coaches, look, supper, do this. Y'all just go ahead on. Y'all know I cannot sit down. If you go back and watch that Ole Miss game, I sat almost the whole Ole Miss game because I really just didn't have anything in the tank. But, uh, again, when you have a staff like mine uh, that knows what to do, you just step out of the way and you just let them roll with it. They work well together, and we were able to pull off uh, that huge upset. Anytime you could get that guaranteed money in the win. Oh, that's a great thing. 
I reminded Tim that we did it the year before to Memphis. They better watch out. They, they, they got their eye on this team right here. I, I know. I'm feeling it in the scheduling right now. I got some hesitation with a few people. They don't want to give us that, that money and that dub. They better watch out. So, yeah, great times. Great season this year. So a little bit more of a um, lighthearted question. Um, but obviously with these times, it's changed the way you've been able to interact with your athletes. Um, how have you been able to – keep in touch with everyone and um, what type of fun, exciting ways are you maybe, uh, are you maybe bringing video chat and that type of stuff to the table now with what we in? Uh, you seem to be a prime expert now. I don't expert, but we definitely have been zooming in <laughs> and zooming out. We no doubt uh, that, that was the, our only and bring all of those signees to camp was you all do virtual visits uh we zoom with each and every one of our signees so that they can see the university of new orleans but we have definitely um been with our um our staff meeting with our team on zoom but also off of zoom when we're on zoom it's, it's pretty lighthearted. we played uh singing whisper the other day uh which was extremely funny the person uh, who was doing charades was muted, and they could sing. We had to guess what they was doing, so that was that was pretty fun times. Uh, watching them do that, and I um, enjoyed that. And so we just try everybody, everyone in a great mental um, state um, during this time. And nothing too heavy. Most of the time, um, my coach is still doing our one-on-one -on -one meetings as it pertains to academics and everything else. I cannot stop smoker. Stop telling Amber to flex. It's hurting. <laughs> but seeing you ask Amber to flex also, I have to stay focused. But that was uh, hilarious, y'all. Maria and Amber are two of my former teammates, and Amber has always been buff. Amber, don't flex. Don't, don't show them your gun. Wait for police. The weight room police, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and coach, not to put anybody on blast, who's the uh, best straight player y'all have? Uh, um, um, when we play with the newcomers, uh, um, it would have to be either Erica or Zoe. <laughs> great personality, great personality. I think Erica did uh, beat it. Michael Jackson beat it, and I was the only one that that get. <laughs> uh, what did you do? Nothing. <laughs> just laugh. You didn't I just it, laughed you, and you looked at dance games, but in every game, I'm looking, you know, I'm figuring things out. I'm already getting to know our players and, and, you know, just seeing who's who. So, yeah. She's smart. She's watching from afar. Um, and then we'll just touch on, like I said, the last one. We really can't go – too much into detail as we still are finalizing some things um, as an athletic department in terms of uh, signing contracts and all that fun paperwork stuff. But coach, can you kind of touch on um, about this upcoming year, maybe in terms of um, what your goals are, or maybe again, without specifically, but maybe um, some, some type of goal, some type of plans for y'all and who you will uh, be taking on and bringing to the Lakefront arena in 2021. Of course, as we are um, in this pandemic. We definitely want to look at opponents. So we're focusing on uh, trying to schedule regional opponents. We do have a couple of contracts already in place, but I'll just hold off on announcing who that is until we things are are really shaping up well. Uh, we do have our educational game day set again. That was such a a great day for us last year with um, 900 and something people in attendance. We have that game set, and I can't talk about uh, the two games that um, we had a home and home with last year. So we'll be sure uh, Texas State will uh, be coming visit our place this year, and then of course, um, just outside of our nine non-conference games, we do start um, conference again uh, before Christmas. Um, time, so we'll be excited about starting off with Abilene Christian and Sam Houston again. So 
Uh, as always, the, the point of conference is to prepare us for conference. Uh, again, I don't back down from um, scheduling pretty tough, especially with the players that we have coming in. Um, I'm my freshman on going experience. We're going to make mistakes as much as I have built them up, and I am excited about this class. They're no doubt freshmen, so they're going to need transition time um, and game experience. So um, it doesn't make sense for us to put them in a whole lot of cupcake games that bear them uh, for the toughness of our conference schedule. And when I say toughness, you know, we had three teams that had 20 in the Southland Conference this year. Um, and, you know, we were right behind them with 17 wins. And when I look at some of them games, we could have been 20 uh, wins as well. So you just don't win 20 games by accident. So I feel most important that we are prepared and not just prepared to compete, but we want to win a championship. That's so excited to see all my former teammates and all of the supporters. Hey, Mr. Bill, the Tom. It's so well. I'm, I'm so excited that you all, all zoomed us on today. Hey, Miss Alea, Mr. Eugene, Miss Eugene. Got a few parents on the call as well. It's great to see everybody. Hey, Claudine. I see Maria. And, and uh, let me go to screen two here. Ash. Uh, hey, Ashka. Yeah, Ashka. That's great to see her. I haven't seen her in a while. And then a little white Mary Lou, but she's detective work right now. Um, Sean is on. Hey, Coach Cook. Uh, Pooh was cruising around her car. Hello, everybody. Um, oh, my God. He sounds like uh, y'all doing a fabulous job. I'm, I cannot believe I, I looked at the uh, support staff. 70 people working there now. I can remember when we had like five. Um, that's just fantastic. I, I, it's the excitement and what you've done is incredible. I'm very proud of you. Uh, you're, uh, obviously, you've got a great AD. Your uh, support staff is uh, what it should be. You're doing it for sure. But it's just great to see that. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased. Thank everybody for coming, and as always, thank you all for your support. Um, it's so good to see everybody. Um, as I have said to some of my church members, just because we're separated doesn't mean that we have to be disconnected. We are separated, but we can stay connected. So let's do that, you all. Let's stay connected. We have the technology to do so. Uh, and again, it's so good to see your faces, and I always pray that you and your family are safe and well during this time.